Yo, what's going on guys? Yes, today's actually a surprise ticket recommendation video. Honestly, I don't remember the last time I did a video like this with my voice. Um, sometimes around the anniversary, I believe, which was what, a few months ago. Um, I ended up skipping the last surprise ticket because it was the ticket that came out with Predator and it was really hard to tell people to not get Predator. So I didn't want to tell anybody anything, so I just skipped it altogether. Sorry to people who were looking for my information on that. Um, I am always on Twitch most of the time, so if you need to ask me a question, you can always hit me up on like Twitter, Twitch, or my Discord. But um, I just kind of avoided that altogether. Anyway, today we were graced by a surprise ticket, which really was a surprise. I was not expecting one so early, um, but. I'm guessing because of the collab going on right now with Shadowverse, the anime uh, anime thing, um, they decided to push out the double whammy combo, which is a scam gotcha and a surprise ticket. Goodbye, $60. So, I thought I'll give my little bit of information on the surprise ticket units. Um, we do have a couple of new ones, and because I missed the last surprise ticket, we have a lot of units to go over. So I'm going to try to focus only on the new units. I will breeze through the old units that are really good, but I'll focus more on the new ones. So if you want to hear about my older units, um, units like Athena, Kalulu, I talk about them like pretty much every other surprise I get. Somebody mentioned in the video that I should talk about the new ones. So I'm going to try to do that more when it comes to these type of videos. But yeah, some important ones that you may want to pick up. Use is still good. Say that's still good. Lancelot and Vayne, it's like, eh, not really something I would pick up. Athena's still good. Adios is kind of eh, um, not really somebody you should pick up. He's good, but eh. Tabina's pretty good for solo stuff. And is like a god unit now for fire, so if you don't have her, she's a pretty good unit for fire. Um, I guess Anthuria is Rebalance, when that come out? I think that came out in April-ish? So maybe I should talk about her. Um, what's really strong about her is that she has like hostility up on her skill one, boosted dodge rate. She can now heal via her skill two if you swamp her form, which also gives a stackable defense buff as well. However, the stackable does not stack with Lumberjack. Her value is a little bit higher than Lumberjack, if I remember correctly. I think Lumberjack is like 40 and hers 50. So you can put her in skill two there. And her skill three gives her instant CA. And every time she CA, she activates skill one. Not to mention, she also gives height, which is a pretty good combination. She has damage, defense, dodge, pretty good unit. Matera is still good unit, um, only for Agni though. And Siegfriedo is pretty godlike for everything. So those are like the old school units. Um, let's go to the new ones. New ones being, who's new for fire? Elnaught and, oh, Abby. Yeah, Abby came out at the beginning of June, like the first banner with Kalulu. Um, I haven't seen much use out of her. I don't have her, unfortunately, so I can't really tell you from my own personal experience. This is what I look around at. Um, she's like a, a baby lumberjack where she activates a lot of her skills off of interaction with the boss. Um, those being healing, buffing. Um, I, I think it's heal, buff, and it's one more. Let me check to be sure. Okay, so it's healing, it's uh, buff the shield, and then it's remove a debuff. So, and she does have a nice little buff. She's not really a clicky unit, so she does have some type of viability in full auto. Units with really long cooldowns are really good for full auto because they don't, they don't click their skill that often. So it's pretty good for that. Um, what I recommend is pressing her. Not really, she's not really used in any meta comp so see it's something you can live without but if you want to pick her up if you like her design or you're a lolly con or some shit go ahead next we have drank um 
I believe he was not out in surprise ticket. But I could be wrong, but um, he's kind of a actually really good unit, but he just doesn't have much viability in the content you want to run him in. Main things he has is that he has stackable uh, debuff resistance and attack down. This is very rare, um, both the combination of both, so having that is pretty good. He does have the spell cancel on target and dodge all foes. Pretty much a hard counter to fa. One thing with it is that it does have a long cooldown, um, but it's still a really good hard counter to fa. Not to mention he also gives you special attack down and when attack damage down, defense down at the cost of filling up one charge of diamond. So he's not a bad unit per se, but it's just that there's already other options. So he's not something that you'll see too often and he's not like a common unit because he's still rather new, but he's not a bad unit. And I think he does activate one of his skills upon dodging, which is his skill one. So it's not, he's not bad at all. Would I recommend surprise taking him? Not really. If you already have like Tabina, then you don't really need him, but he's still something that's a good unit. He may be useful in the future. So something you may want to keep in mind when looking at him. Illinois is pretty much the same way. Um, her mechanic was something about paint, if I remember correctly. Uh, she reminds me of Zet Set Radio um, character. She has to, I like her design a ton. Um, low key, I thought about surprise taking her, but because of the design alone, uh, probably not going to happen. Because if I pull this unit after I surprise taking her, I'm gonna be very very mad. So we'll see. Um, but she does have a pretty decent kit altogether. I think he does have stackable too, right? If I remember correctly, on one of her skills, he does have stackable. I think I've seen her use for a solo. Um, the only problem with her is that she's not doing anything unique, right? None of the stuff she has is super unique. So, it's kind of here here and there. Um, she's a fun unit, just design-wise and everything. But she's not doing anything that's massively unique or anything, so... It's a unit to keep in mind. She's not a bad unit, but not unique enough. There's no meta comp where you have to run that unit. You have replacements for her. And I get the last one to be Seder, right? Where's Seder? Oh, there. Seder. Um, probably the best design unit out of the bunch, in my opinion. It'll not it's good, but Seder's like 10 times better, dude. Even if she comes with a big package. <laughs> um... Oh, she was the one with the stackable. Excuse me. Forgot. She comes with like stackable 30, uh, which is unfortunate. Tabina does have 40 cap, so it makes Tabina a superior unit when it comes to stacking debuffs like attacking the fence down. But she does, Seder does come with a really unique mechanic in the game, which is turn ex um, debuff duration. It's a like cut to it, so think of it debuffs from mainly bubs where. You cannot remove them via clarity. Seder does not remove it. She instead cuts the turn. So if the debuff is like two turns left, it'll be cut by two turns, pretty much removing the debuff. So as newer content comes out and we cannot use clarity anymore, um, Seder will become a more core unit. So she's more of a future proofing unit than a unit that's really viable right now. Um, I also believe this to be a more common debuff. There's another character in the game that has the same debuff now. I can't remember who off the top of my head, but there's another one with the exact same um, debuff duration cut. So I find this to be the new way that they're gonna do debuffs in the future, where they will now be applying debuffs you cannot clear, and you will have to have these type of units that can um, cut the duration. Other than that, she does have Substitute, which is pretty cool. Um, she was used in a Fa solo, so if you want to use her, if you really like her design, she's not a bad unit. Um, another unit, though, I would not recommend surprise ticketing, though, because if you have Tabina, there's not much point to Seder, but she's not a bad unit. And that pretty much covers the fire cast. Most of them are pretty okay, but um, none of these new units are something you want to go after. 
and let's get on to the next alley. Now we are on to water, and water is a little bit hmm, peculiar. Um, you gonna start really once you win surprise ticket. You do have blue Percival with the new water attack up passive. However, if you have not seen the memes about water, there's so many units you want to run in the back row, and he's just another one. So, though he does come up with a pretty great weapon for Ogi builds if you want to use Christ Shore. So, he's not a bad surprise ticket because his weapon is still viable. Um, Sturm is a great unit. See what's my MVP for doing Shiva. Uh, so he probably has the most damage in one click out of any unit in water right now, being her skill three um, for Ogi. So really strong unit. Um, I don't remember if she was in the last surprise ticket, but I thought I'd talk about her a little bit more. Vayne is still a good unit regardless. He's pretty much a MVP for Fa high level if you want to use him. Lily's still a god unit. Romeo did get his 5 star uncap, and he's also a good OG unit as well. So if you don't have Romeo, maybe somebody you want to get. Funny enough, my Romeo's not level 100 yet, because I have no reason to level him up yet. So I'm just waiting for another unit to come out. 5 star, and then I'll level him up as well. Um, Lesia still has the charge attack nuke on chain burst, which is pretty godlike for that alone. Vampy is still a strong unit. I think I talked about her in the last surprise ticket. I may be wrong about that though. I think she came out really early on in the year though. So I'm pretty sure I talked about her. And that's pretty much it for the older units. Um, the new ones being Shura. Now Shura is a very... <laughs> She's a unit with a one very strong skill being that she does have any time assassin on her skill what is it skill one right yeah her skill one cannon or bow um this is going to take some massive five brain strat to really utilize it properly so if you are a water main um, egg thigh, maybe somebody you want to pick up just for the skill alone. However, rec I recommend having a massive 200 IQ brain because you're going to need to work hard to get this to work in GW, which is your main purpose of making this character or picking up this character. So it's a unit you want to keep in mind when it comes around to next Guild Wars because you may have some viability there. But trust me. It's going to be hard, and you're going to have to really think about it to figure out some big brain strat to make this character work. But I do th believe she'll have some type of viability there. Her rest of her skill set, I don't know what she does really. She has like stackable or something, and she has to hit her skill 2 to Ogi. She's a big gimmick character, but her skill 1 is a really good gimmick. So, just keep her in mind. When it comes to Water GW in 2021, yes, I said 2021, so we have plenty of time to have another surprise ticket. Now we have Miliora and Shali Lao or something like that. Um, the dual potatoes that came out on Water right, I think a day before Water GW came out. They weren't really used much for GW to my knowledge, um, so that's kind of unfortunate. They are very heavy one turn burst unit with the triple attack. And then they have like, uh, I believe they, ha they have triple attack in turn one with 100% charge bar, supplemental damage on like the first and third hit. And then on the second hit, it's like Grimnir, well, Valentine's Grimnir, where it's like random hits that can actually hit another foe if there's two enemies. This character is another gimmick. Um, but it's unique, so I don't know if I would recommend surprise ticketing them. The rainfall is the new skill with it time on target. So it's the exact same skill as time on target for Nighthound, which is a pretty decent nuke. Other than that, they're kind of eh. Um, I'm pretty sure 
giant killer would be really abused when water has like if you can actually use giant killer on somebody like lucio is summary lucio and then they'll have what 90 percent bonus damage on triple attacks like i'm pretty sure that you can get really nutty with this combo with her and lucio um but currently most people run summer lucio with uno because he does have any time assassin which is a bigger bigger damage but they're not a bad unit just because of Lucio. So maybe somebody you want to pick up if, you know, water gets, um, Shiva, <laughs> pretty much. So they're not a bad unit at all. It's someone to keep in mind for the future. Um, I think that's it for all the new water units. Yeah, that's it. There weren't many water units in the last couple months, so. Unfortunate. But it's been, what, Earth GW and Fire GW? So that's mainly why. Other than that, let's get on to the next LD. Now, speaking of the Earth GW, now we're going to the Earth LD. So, this LD, most of the units here are pretty bad, I have to keep it real with you. Um, but we'll try to go over the ones that are worth getting. So, for surprise ticket... <sighs> Medusa's still okay. She was using a couple full autos for number 150. Um, Kaliosha would use for a very nice combo with Summer Silva. I don't think that's going to be used again though, so... This is something to keep in mind. Swords just got his um, Fulmit Break, so he's actually a pretty insane nuker if you want to do Labella shenanigans. La Diva with the MVP for Magna. Really strong unit for one turn bursting, two turn bursting. So maybe somebody want to think about. Don't sleep on La Diva. He was really strong. Um, Jen I talked about, he came out at the beginning of the year, so I don't need to talk about him. He's trash anyway. And that's about it for, uh, Earth. Wow. <laughs> There's not much to talk about, because most of them are just not that great. Bow is a good unit, um, by the way, I didn't mention him. He's pretty good. But for the new units for Earth, this one trash. Let's not talk about her, bro. She's just bad. She's like bad i remember when she came out people thought she was like a 2016 unit because her kit was so basic and bad uh, maybe she'll get a rebound in the future but right now she's kind of eh but who's really great units pangy oh my god i may surprise this may be my surprise ticket because i don't have her and i was very sad to not have her for last gw what makes her really strong is that she does have guaranteed triple attacks. And that's pretty much all you really need <laughs> in 2020. Guaranteed triple is just like an instant win button. So I don't even have to talk about the rest of her kit. Just know she has guaranteed triple attack. And then after she triple attacks, she hits the nuke. So I mean, that's about it. That's all you really need to know. She can ogie and do all this stuff, but she has a guaranteed triple and had to nuke right after. And really, that's good enough for 2020 to be a meta unit. Just welcome to GBF. Oh, guaranteed triple, a nuke? 20, 20 out of 10. So, yeah. Really strong unit, just for that alone. And an LD where not every unit has guaranteed triple. <clears throat> Vashara Gazeta. Naramea. It's pretty strong. Pretty strong. And you don't have to click any buttons on her, which makes her really good for GW. Well, that's about it for Earth. I mean, she's right there, bro, the MVP. She was definitely one of the top five units for Earth GW. The other ones being Naramea, um, Mahira, Vashra Zeta, and that's been pretty much it. Um, and then you have Summer Alex for Sniper 150. But other than that, those are like the main units for GW. But next LE, let's go!
Hey, right. we're now on to wind. And just like w Earth, winds, the units are pretty eh. Um, Hell has had some viability for Grand Order high level teams. You're not really using her on Ellie, but you're using her off Ellie. So keep that in mind. Um, Yoda's. Yoda has become a god of Galleon and one turn setups, or, or two turn setups, actually, uh, involving Monkey and Freyr. So, if you're looking for a heavy wind burst, Yoda's actually meta right now. So, good unit to look into. Urius, Urius, I don't have to talk about him. Morigna, don't have to talk about them. Wait, there's no. Oh, noise. Wow, there's really no other wind unit that came out? Am I blind? Huh. Huh. Wait, I have every unit here. Huh. Really? Not no wind units, huh? Other than noise? Um Oh yeah, Vera's pretty good for Ogi. If you're looking for a unit for one turn Ogi. But yeah, noise came out. Um Urius with nukes. <laughs> That's the best way to describe him, bro. He's Urius with nukes, pretty much. Instead of doing no damage, he does a little bit of nuke damage. He has the stackable of 40. Um, he's fire Tabina, pretty much, would be a better way to look at him. I don't believe, though, he has random debuffs. Instead of random debuffs, you get multi-attack boost. Now, that could be better or worse depending on what you're looking for. Um, he does a little bit more damage early on, but survivability wise, I prefer Urius because of the random debuffs, you know. If you land Charm and Blind on Urius, that's way more value when it comes to harder content, so. This, the, the random aspect of this is too powerful for me to um, ignore. Especially if you're casting so many times in the same turn. But if you're looking for a pure offense, uh, Noise is the better option for pure offense. Only offense. He can debuff, but you're really using him as offense. So, not bad. Um, I would probably use him more in like a six man, six man group, and Urius is more solo. But they're both pretty good. This is an alternative option. And that's about it for wind, apparently. We're now on to light. And light... Um... We do have GW coming up, so I, don't, I think I'll mention a couple more units here. Uh, we have GW in January, so they'd probably be another surprise ticket in maybe... Late November. Maybe. Um, if not, then it'll be Christmas. But we have John Dark, which is good for Ogi one turn comps. Um, Fairy's still good at strike time unit. Yes, it's 2016 unit that has not had been rebalanced. It has no Ogi effect. See, so pretty much Summer Zoe in terms of ancient, outdated unit that's still really good because of one button. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's not as broken as Summer Zoe, but she's close. Uh, Silva's still a good unit for her back row, nuke. Keep in mind, it does require four chain. DLF is a god unit now for full auto if you don't have her full limit broken. She's really good. She has one of the rare clarity on Ogi, or Boss's Ogi, which is a really good thing if you have a use Lily. Imagine that, but on light. Really good for our full auto wing Bahamut high level. And uh, the Dark Dragon of the Six Advents, really good for that. Sarin is really good for EO combos. There's always still good to take it for high, harder content. Sarin is good Ogi unit if you have a Whale Grid. Shittori's, Shittori. And that's about it. Okay, let's go on to the new units. Now, 
big unit here and probably a big surprise ticket for people farming the Dark Dragon is Percival. He does have a very weird interaction here with EO being that he gives light ally skill damage specs based on the Aurora Crest. You're probably wondering where do you get the crest from? As I did mention, Saruna is used in the combo because he does have the ability to reset his skills. So the combo, he ends up giving you two crests, which is some type of value when I believe, I think each each um, crest with Percival gives you like 6k damage. And when you combine that with Eo, who hits 20 times, I think, that's a lot of damage. So... It, is it 20? I forget. How many times did EO hit again? Maybe I'm thinking about the wrong character. I think I'm talking about, I think I'm thinking about Melissa Bella. Maybe EO is 8. I don't remember. Where's EO? Yeah, yeah, there we go. This is my full auto comp for the um, Dark Dragon. I call it full auto dad, so. If you guys played Yu-Gi-Oh, you probably know what I mean. Seven hits, okay. But yeah, seven hits. The added, the added damage does matter. Um, it's very niche though. Not everybody has Percival, but now it's your op your opportunity to get him. If you didn't get him last, I think he was in last surprise to get too. But still good unit, so I will look at him. If you're gonna be farming the Dark Dragon during the Magnifest, it may be somebody you wanna pick up. And I think there's another unit here that was new. Mm. Wait, is, is that it? It's only... Huh. I feel like they added a lot of units, but maybe it's only fire. That's got like 20 units. <laughs> like, I'm looking at the other Ellie's and I'm just like... I'm really not missing much here, huh? Yeah, I, I suppose it's only fire that got a lot of units. But we're on to the last Ellie being dark and the strongest Ellie in the game. So let's get there. We are now on to the last and final Ellie being dark. And this is the one Ellie where you can just price take an ending you want, because they're all pretty good units. Uh very good unit, Bashrega God unit. I use them for a lot of full auto stuff. And in fact he just doesn't die for 20 turns. You can cheese a lot of content. Uh, I know he's being used currently right now to cheese Fa high level. If you guys don't know, if you, a lot of people host on Twitter, they are failed runs. So people would join with Bashiraga because he's guaranteed to live 20 turns, which is generally enough to kill Fa high level at that point. So you can join like the uh, failing runs and use Bashiraga to kill it. Guaranteed. Provided low enough, like let's say 10% and below. He can like just Ogi and start nuking for like trillion damage to a great decent vampy still a good surprise ticket vate is pretty much surprise ticket for his weapon if you don't have this weapon it's a good weapon though tanya is a god unit mm, i think that's about it right there kalulu god unit Wolf, I'm actually using Wolf for my OTK for Dark. Um, I could probably show it to you at the end of the video, I guess. So in case people who want to invest into it can um, copy it. It does require a Sky Piercer though, so it's kind of whale. But Sky Piercer has become a really common option, uh, a common option on Dark, so maybe not as whale as I think it is. And we did get that 20 gold moons not too long ago. Luna is still a good unit just for um, doing Arkham. <sighs> Predator the God. Um, I, I mean, like, I changed my name, right? I changed my name to No Predator because I didn't have the unit. If that doesn't tell you how important that unit was to me, then I don't know, dude. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so if you guys see No Predator, it's, it's me. Um... Other than that, that's about it. There weren't really much dark units added, so... Eh. 
Pick up Predator. If you don't have Predator, by the way. Trust me. We have Dark TW around the corner. Trust me. I don't care if you're Magna. I don't care if you're Primal. Pick up Predator. <laughs> Are you going to hate this TW? If you have Summer Zoe, pick up this character. Are you going to hate TW so much? You're gonna you're gonna be molding at the the sheer thought of people that are running this character. It's, it's a little tip, you know. It's a little tip between me and you. <laughs> if you didn't pick her up last surprise ticket, this is the current surprise ticket to pick her up now. Or, well, <laughs> good luck. Good luck, man. Anyways, I thought I'll show you my um OTK right now. I'm using real quick. It doesn't take that long, I don't think. I think my ship is on light though. Let me check. I was doing, yeah, it's on light. Uh, let me be right back really quick. Okay. Um, changing my cruise ship does take a little bit of time. Originally, I was going to post the EX Plus video, but then I was like, ah, there's no point. Um, a lot of people have been posting them, so like, I guess Dark is such a common Ellie, right? That so many people throw out videos for it, so it's, it's like there's not really much point to it. In my opinion, it's not much at all. Uh, it's over here, I think. So I ended up redoing my teams in GBF. I spent like a day doing it. So I ended up redoing them. These two are the ones that are currently being used. Um, these other four, I haven't made them yet because I don't know if they're going to increase the health of the new, of the new, uh, EX Plus in the future when this rotation is done. So if you didn't know, every GW is like 6 LE rotation. Um, the last one will be Light. So I don't know if they're going to increase the health after Light GW. But you can see I'm running Wolf here because he does have guaranteed triple attack. And guaranteed triple attack is pretty broken. As I mentioned earlier, this unit, no matter how like bad a unit is, if they have guaranteed triple attack, you can probably get some type of viability out of them. So, notice there's no crit. A lot of these OTKs, right, they all have crits and like tons of crit. Uh, they're not consistent because of the EMPs, right? So, just keep that in mind when you, when you see like people do this OTK, right? A lot of them have a ton of crit. So it's not consistent at all. So just be sure to be looking at what characters are critting and how much the characters do on non-crit. So that's very important. The most common reason being that they most grids like this, right? They have Blood Gang in it. And Blood Gang does have the very small chance of adding crit. So it does make the setup look like it's consistent, but it's really not. I ended up having to use Celeste Axe because um, I need Magnum on the grid because I'm running Baja. So, end up having to make that work stuff. But this is what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to sew other setups, but it's like, ah, it's not even worth it. But that's why Wolf is pretty good for people who are going to focus on Dark GW. Keep in mind, my rank, my six is ranked. If you have Predator ranks, this is practically free. You could probably even throw in like a, the, um, the macaron weapon, the what is it, twinkling something? It's one of these weapons down here. You can either throw in that or these weapon. One of the two, you can throw them in because predator ring adds so much damage that um, you're overkilling it. So you can lower your damage a little bit to add a little bit more drop rate, or you can um, lower your damage and add a this. It's up to you though, but it does require like a fully optimized team. Other than that though, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, come on my live stream or respond to me on Twitter or something. I'll try to answer more specific questions about characters. Uh, summon wise, I mean, I'm not really gonna talk much about it, but there's a lot of the new bonus damage summons you may wanna pick up, right? Which is like, Mammoth, Owl Cat, the Water Jellyfish thing, and Red here. And then you have weapons like, you know, uh, Gisela. So, 
So these are obvious things though, uh, at least the uh, weapons are, so I don't want to talk about them too much. But if you have a specific question about them, just hit me up in the comments or something and I'll try to, I'll try to respond as fast as I can. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Um, later boys.